About a year ago, I digitized a record using my Artcessories USB Phono Plus and my laptop. I used Audacity software to do pop and click reduction on it, uh, but the results were kind of mixed. So I'm going to try some new things and see if I can get better results. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. This USB Phono Plus has some sound card features on it. It records 16-bit WAV files at 44.1 kilohertz. That's CD quality. However, if you're going to manipulate audio, you should probably record at a higher bit rate and a higher sampling frequency to get the best results. I'm still going to be using my USB Phono Plus as a preamplifier, but I'm not going to be using the USB part. I'm just going to be outputting the audio from it into this Tascam uh, DR40, and I have it set to record 24 bit wave files at 96 kilohertz. I'll then take the audio from this recorder and manipulate it using two software titles. One of the titles I'm going to try out is called Click Repair. It is available as an evaluation version for 21 days. And the other title I want to try out is called Isotope RX-8. But before I encode this vinyl, I want to clean this vinyl, so I need to get out my spin clean. Here is the record that I'll be encoding. This is the Alito High School Choir 1974-1975 and I don't know how well you can see it but this thing is covered in dust and has fingerprints on it as well. So I want to clean this off and I'm going to be using my Anniversary Edition Spin Clean. This is distilled water here and this is the solution I'm using on that cleaning pad. I've wiped this off with a lint-free cloth and now I'm going to let it finish drying on this rack. I want to make sure it's completely dry before I do my encode. Now that this record is clean and dry, it's time to put it on the turntable and record it. I have it on my GLI Pro SL2500 with my Sure cartridge. I'm running it through the Art Accessories USB Phono Plus, but I'm not using the USB feature because that records 16-bit audio at 44.1 kilohertz. I want to record 24-bit, so I'm running the output on this preamp into this Tascam DR40 to capture this vinyl. Before I do this for real, I want to set a level. This level is looks pretty low. I'm not seeing any clipping at all. So I'm going to turn up the gain here. If I turn it way up, you'll see that turn red. That's clipping. I'm going to back it off till there is no clipping at all. I'm recording uh, the regular track and a safety track at minus 12 dB. Uh, I don't see this getting too terribly hot. I'll be monitoring my recording with these Logitech PC speakers. I'm going to hit record once, that puts it in standby. I hit record again and I am now recording. I'm going to go ahead and drop the needle. I'm now recording side one of Aledo High School 1974-1975. There were some significant pops and crackles in that recording. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play side two. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and use this brush. Even though this was recently cleaned, the act of playing side one will cause particles to stick to this vinyl. So here we go with side two. While I was recording the second side, I downloaded two programs, Click Repair and Isotope RX-8 Advanced. I discovered that the RX-8 software is crippleware. It will not allow you to save any changes you make to an audio file. However, the inability to save on this trialware crippleware 
won't prevent me from seeing what it does, I can still capture the audio through screen capture. Let's compare an audio passage. I'm going to start with the raw recording, then each of the click repair tools. I'm going to play a little bit of side one, track one, and you're going to hear lots of pops and crackles here, even with this vinyl being clean. One by one. The click repair software has two sliding scales, one for D-click and the other for D-crackle. D-crackle is really more for 78s than it is for LPs. Also D-click defaults to 50 when you hit default LP. If you have a particularly percussive album, you probably want to turn the D-click down a little bit so that you don't chop out any percussion. When you run the software, it actually shows you little red marks along the waveform where it's removing clicks from the waveform. I think this is a pretty neat feature as it gives you an idea of how much repair it's doing to the waveform. Here's the same passage I played earlier, but after using the default LP setting on the click repair software. <laughs> The clicks are gone and now there's a type of buzzing artifact everywhere those clicks were removed. It's not nearly as noticeable where fewer clicks got replaced, but the fact that it's having to kind of interpolate waveforms to remove all those clicks is creating its own type of noise that is definitely audible. I did a little adjusting on the Isotope software as I went and it also had noticeable artifacts. I thought they were even worse sounding artifacts than the click repair software. Let's recap with the raw wave file back to back with both click removal filters. I was quite pleased with the results that I got with the click repair evaluation version. I've included a link to it and the other software I tried out in the description here. If I had a lot of records like this to encode, I would definitely buy the license beyond the 21 day evaluation period for click repair. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, and remember, stay thrifty, everyone.